From this day, all generations will call me blessed. So Mary proclaims in a moment of great joy. And indeed, we are interrupting our month-long journey through John chapter 6 to acclaim the blessedness of Mary. Why? Why honor Mary in this way? Because the Almighty has done great things for me, and holy is his name, so Mary tells us. As always, when we honor a saint, we are ultimately honoring what God has done in and through the saint. That's truer of Mary than anyone else. The solemnity of the Assumption today is when we celebrate the fact that Mary was brought body and soul into heaven. Everyone else leaves their body here and doesn't get it back until the end of time. But Mary's body is brought to heaven right away. That exact moment is not recorded in the Bible, true. But belief in this event goes all the way back to the beginning of the church, even before scripture was finished being written. It makes perfect sense when you understand how scripture portrays Mary as the new Ark of the Covenant. The scene from the visitation of Mary to Elizabeth is a close parallel to an Old Testament scene where King David brings the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem. In both events, they arise and go to the hill country of Judah. When the Ark enters Jerusalem, David asks, how can the ark of the Lord come to me? Elizabeth asks, how can the mother of my Lord come to me? David leaps before the ark and cries out in the same way that John the Baptist leaps in Elizabeth's womb as Elizabeth cries out. David keeps the ark in the hill country of Judah for three months. Mary stays with Elizabeth in Judah for three months. But it goes further. The book of Revelation, our first reading, John sees the Ark of the Covenant in heaven, but then immediately describes a woman giving birth to a male child destined to rule all nations, caught up to God and his throne. Just as David brought the Ark of the Covenant into Jerusalem, God brings Mary, the true Ark, into heaven. So what does this have to do with our ongoing series on the Eucharist? Everything. The ark was a golden box that marked God's presence on earth. But do you know what the ancient Israelites kept in that box? They used the tablets of the Ten Commandments. They had the staff of Aaron the high priest and a jar of manna, that miraculous bread from heaven that they used to eat in the desert. Yes, the same manna that Jesus compares to his flesh in John chapter 6. The ark held bread from heaven as a prefiguration of Mary, whose womb contained the true bread from heaven, Jesus Christ, who gives his flesh and blood to us. And what is it to receive the Eucharist if not to receive God's presence into our very selves? This is the reason we honor Mary so much so often. She is the prime example, the most perfect disciple who heard the word of God and kept it so perfectly, she was literally filled with the word made flesh. Adam and Eve broke our human nature in original sin, but Jesus is the new Adam who recreates our human nature, and Mary is the new Eve. And now there are two human bodies in heaven, male and female. Their bodies promises to us reminders that if we are faithful, we too will have glory in heaven beyond what even Adam and Eve would have had had they never sinned. So what can we learn from Mary's assumption? There are many things, but here's three to focus on. That we should look forward to heavenly glory, that we should embrace God's word, and that we should praise God in, res in response to what he does. First is the heavenly glory. After the resurrection, at the end of time, our bodies will be perfect, reliable, immortal. By remembering the ascension of Jesus, the assumption of Mary, 
We can find hope and encouragement when our bodies let us down, which they do so often. Deformity, pain, weakness, COVID, and all the other diseases will be gone. Ever been frustrated by the inability of your body to do what you want it to do? Both Jesus and Mary have bodies under their perfect control. And those bodies last forever. They entered heaven 2,000 years ago, but still have them. And Mary sometimes appears to people in her body, even altering her appearance to be recognizable to whatever culture she's engaged with. To get the most out of receiving the Eucharist, take time on occasion to meditate on these promises to build excitement for what the body and blood of Jesus can do to your body. Secondly, you must strive to accept God's word. Mary says, let it be done to me according to your will when the angel comes to her. She doesn't argue. She doesn't let some false sense of independence or pride get in the way. Do you? accept the word of God? Do you accept all of the church's teachings or just the ones that are pleasant and popular right now? Do you receive God's word? By reading scripture. We Catholics have a reputation for not knowing the Bible and we've kind of earned it. If we want to be raised up to heavenly glory like Mary, then we need to embrace God's word as Mary did. And one great way to do this is to pray the rosary as it's meant to be prayed, which is a meditation, a time to reflect on the events of Scripture as we're praying all those Hail Marys. Lastly, we must praise God. Mary's first response to Elizabeth's greeting is to praise God. Now, God doesn't need our praise like he's got some self-esteem problem. But human nature needs to give praise. Look at the eagerness and attention that some people will give to sports or celebrities, to getting rich, to political ideas and leaders, to their own pleasure and entertainment. Human beings always worship something. And if we are not deliberate about praising and worshiping God, then we are by default worshiping something else. And that's idolatry. That's the road to damnation, which is easier to follow than we like to admit. Praise God in good times and in bad. Praise him for existence and salvation, for the grace to endure, the chance to be forgiven, for success, and for the humility that comes from failure. There are many ways to praise God, and we should use all of them but the one that stands above the rest is the Mass. This is why I stress the importance of participating in, of responding, of singing at Mass. To be in heaven means to praise God. So if we are reluctant to sing praise to God on earth, something will have to change before we can get into heaven where we will always be singing praise. It isn't about what we feel at a given moment. Believe it or not, I don't always feel like singing all these prayers at Mass. But I do it because it's what we are called to do. It is the choice to glorify God in His own words and in the way He's asked us to glorify Him. Even Mary's hymn of praise in the Gospel is based on an Old Testament hymn of praise, giving God His own words back to Him in joy. So the church gives us this act of praise, this Mass, not to entertain us, but to lead us in authentic worship. And we should embrace it as best we can and trust in God to make up for those weaknesses and to bring along that continual conversion of heart. My soul proclaims the greatness of the Lord. My spirit rejoices in God my Savior, for he has looked with favor on his lowly servant. These words of Mary can be true, are true, for every one of us. We have only to recognize that what he has done for her, he offers to do for us through the gift of the Eucharist and all the sacraments. Glorify him for the promise of eternal life in a perfect body.
receive his words in scripture and tradition and personal prayer, and then praise him, for he has filled the hungry, not just with good things, but with the greatest gift there is, his very self.